Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, uh, yeah, I'll still be continuing our discussion for these problems. It's actually almost a daily upload, but uh, to be honest, I'm uh, recording these videos all at once in a go. So maybe I'm recording six or se six to seven videos at one go. So when by the time you see this, I actually recorded this prior a few days ago. Uh, and today we'll actually be only discussing problems eight, nine, and ten. Uh, maybe you might be confused. Why do do I not? discuss problem seven because uh to be very honest i do not know how to solve it even though i have looked at the problems uh maybe it's just out of my uh knowledge so uh if any of you if any of you guys know how to solve problem seven you can write it down in the comments below because for me personally i find that it does not have sufficient information to be able to be solved so just so let's just look at the more complete ones even though they appear shorter so look up, look over to problem 8 we have six sticks of the following lengths 1 3 5 7 11 13 how many different triangles can be made using any three of these sticks as sides uh so uh, maybe you guys know or have observed it before. So, so let me tell you a fact. So this is called the triangle, triangle inequality because it's both sides are not equal, 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 a equality. So it says that. So maybe uh, label these sides as a, b, and c. So for any a, b, and c a plus b so any two sides add up together will exceed the third side this is a very quite an easy concept to understand for one because uh maybe say if it does not exceed so maybe for case one maybe it's equal so one and then three and then we have four so these two are actually just uh, uh same line so you can't form a triangle you can't bend it like pata okay so and then this is this is obviously not possible or it so this one maybe one two and then four this one is even more absurd you can't even close it properly okay so take note of this uh characteristic we will be using these and a very and a very how to say a very sly way to use this is to look at the smallest the two smaller numbers and add up and to see if it exceeds the third number so uh look at look over here we, we have one and then one plus three is four one plus five is six so and then may, after a few rounds of counting you can see that actually this one cm stick is actually basically useless so we just start with the three one so uh let's look at three five seven so that is so we add the two smaller ones three plus five is eight so it does it exceed seven yes so this is counted as one group then we also have three five eleven does it exceed no so no three seven eleven does it exceed no and three eleven thirteen so three plus eleven does it exceed thirteen yes so this is the second group and then uh let's look at five 5, 7, 11. 5 plus 7, does it exceed 11? Yes, so this is our third group. And then 5, 11, and 13. Uh, for the other smaller ones that which I have not listed out, maybe you can try it yourself, but I'm just listing what I have done myself. So over here, is 5 plus 11 larger than 13? Yes, so this is our fourth group. And then uh, for the last one, actually, 7 11 and 13 this one also obviously 7 plus 11 exceeds 13 so this is our fifth triangle and if you try a few more you will see that you'll just be stuck with these five combinations so our answer for problem 8 is actually 5 so here take it just jot down okay so because i will be making some space for problems 9 and 10 um how do i say so well i erase maybe you can read problems 9 and 10 maybe uh, so long as it's a very quick one okay so yeah okay so now we have problem 9 the digit sum of 2020 is 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 4 and how many 4 digit integers including 2020 have digit sum equal to 4 
So four digit integers, uh, normally we will say positive integers. Positive, positive. Uh, sorry for my bad handwriting, but it's always like that, okay? So have digit sum equal to four. So we know that uh, for a four digit number, it's first thousands digit, it should at least be one, right? So we have one, two, three, and four. And we will not be counting any cases with the thousand digit larger than five because five is already bigger than four. So yeah, so let's count these cases. I will I will not be using some very complicated formulas. I just like it's just basic listing. So for four for the case where the thousand digit is four because it's already satisfied. So the remaining three can only be zero. So there's only one case, right? So for three, and then you you will only have maybe one zero zero. But for this one, you can slot it not just here, but also here and here. So you will have three cases. And then for two, this is the way it starts getting interesting because uh, how do I say it? How many ways do you can you arrange this? So we have two cases. So one of them is either one is two zero zero or the other one is one one zero. So you can see that in both of these cases, there is one that stands out. So we can just arrange the, how do I say, arrange the position of 2 here. Then we can see this is 1, 2, 3. And then arrange the position of 0 in the second case, 4, 5, 6. So here we have 3. And then here we also have 3. So this brings our total count to 10. And then for this a case where, where we have 1, so this one might be a little bit more complicated because we have this one plus this one plus this one should be three so um what do we have so we have zero one two one 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 and then what do we have some more uh let me think uh wait what do we have some more uh okay we'll just do this first uh, okay so zero one two so uh maybe you can because this this has more cases so imagine so this place how many numbers can you place so we have three right and then after choosing one how many places can you place at this one the tens digits you have two and then the last one you only have one choice so three times two times one equals to six actually this is a few called uh permutation and combination which I believe I because I'm KBSI, I don't know about you KSSR guys lah. So this one is actually taught in KBSI in form five. It is quite late. So yeah, okay. I won't explain much. This is our first case for the thousands digit being one, and then for one one one, we will have only one case because we can't actually move the digits. So here we have three times two plus one is six, and then one. I remember there's one more. Wait, what was it ah? Uh oh yeah. 3, 0, 0. So you can see the 3 is the odd one out, and then we can move the position of 3. Maybe we put it here, the hundreds digit, or the tens digit, or the units digit. So we have 3 cases. So calculating all of this, there won't be any more if you can try and do it yourself. So adding all of these together, we have in total 20 cases. So I hope you've got the answer right. And now the last problem of the day a sequence. Okay, um, I'm lazy to talk right now. So, this one will require you to be a little bit more hardworking. So, uh, I hope you have understood the question by now. So, I'll lead you on with A3, A3 which is the third term. It equals to 1 plus. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. So, this n is actually equal to 1. So, this is A1 and then this is A2. So, A4 will be 1 plus A3 plus over a two something like that okay so this this is how it works so wait let me erase this because it's so we know the values of a1 and a2 already right so one plus five divided by two equals to three and then for a4 this one will be one plus three divided by five equals to four over five now don't get too depressed or like too shocked because it some somehow will return to normal. Just wait for it to happen. One over one plus four five over four over five divided by three. So a five is equal to three over five. Uh okay, so this one is so we have okay, let's make a how do I say let's make some 
let's write it down in neatly so two five three four over five three over five and then okay con let's continue a6 equals to one plus uh, so the previous one is three over five and then the previous previous one is four over five so it's actually oh it's actually two then what about a7 this one will be one plus two divided by three over five is actually five so now look using these two we will get the eighth one will be three and then so on and so forth it'll be a recurring sequence what do i mean by a recurring sequence it means that this pattern will repeat itself so you can see that there are five terms in a pattern in a recurring sequence so this is the first second third fourth fifth and then after that you will jump at six seven eight nine tenth eleventh twelfth thirteen fourteen fifteen so uh this one is it actually simplifies down to oh sorry so we uh judging from here we have five terms so which term the which term does it correspond to so one two three divided by five so we have uh 24 and then you do the division yourself and then the remainder is three so for remainder three this means that the 123rd term corresponds to three in the sequence so the value of the 123rd term is three and yeah i have actually discussed just like that 10 uh three problems so because this is a bit lengthy i apologize for that uh we'll see in the next video so they are going to be get progressively harder i guess so yeah bye bye